Mostly hate getting old fast and you're losing steam. Break out a piece of paper, crayons, and a pencil. Tune in Mr. Allison's YouTube channel. So, Kobe, 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 you don't bother me. Hey, gonna make some art for everyone to see. Hi, boys and girls. Hi, up here. Up here. Hi. Guys, today we are going to be learning about a new type of art called optical illusion art. And as you can see, this art is pretty wild and crazy and it tricks your eyes and your brain and it's really exciting and interesting art. So we're going to talk about this type of art and a couple of artists who specialize in optical illusion art. In fact, we're going to call, that's a long name, right? Can you say optical illusion? That's a long name, so we're just going to call it op art, O-P, op art, short for optical illusion art. So before we start learning about optical illusion art, let's take a look at those two words, optical and illusion. The first word, optical, means having to do something with your eyes or with your eyesight, optical. So when you hear the word optical, think eyes or eyesight. The word illusion means something that tricks you or isn't actually what it appears to be or what it seems to be. That's called an illusion. So it's optical illusion, which means it plays tricks on your eyes. So art that tape plays tricks on your eyes, that is op art, optical illusion art. Just like this, take a look at this an impossible triangle. You couldn't build this triangle. It's in, very difficult even to draw this triangle, but this gives you an optical illusion. Watch that silver ball, ball as it goes around and you'll see that this is kind of a tricky optical illusion uh, piece of art here. It can't actually be, be built. Pretty cool, I love looking at this. All right, so this is done by one of my favorite optical illusion artists, maybe my favorite, M.C. Escher, but this just is to show you what op art is. So if you notice, we have a two-dimensional, just length and width drawing right here with the sleeve and the arm, but then it turns into a three-dimensional drawing with the shadow and the shading, and it becomes this three-dimensional hand drawing the two-dimensional arm and sleeve. And then it becomes the three-dimensional hand drawing the two-dimensional arm and sleeve of the three-dimensional hand drawing the two-dimensional arm and sleeve of the three-dimensional hand drawing the two-dimensional arm and sleeve. So I love this. This is really cool. And this is a great example of op art, optical illusion art. Looks like the hands just jump off the page. Here's another example. Take a look at this. I'm sure you see that tree and the sun or you know, sunlight behind it. But do you see the illusion of the faces? This face right here with the eye and the nose and the mouth looking down at this face, which is likely a, a female with the eyes and nose and mouth looking up at the male. Pretty cool, huh? Two images in one. Here's another uh, op art with two images in one. We have this guy here dressed in white playing the flute or piccolo or some instrument and we have this lady in the background sitting on the rock rock turn facing this guy listening to him presumably so that is the uh in the foreground that is what your eye is supposed to see first but uh you see it don't you you see the second image in this op art example of the face that's right here's the head a whole head actually here's the head here's the hair here is one of the eyes. Here's another eye, the nose, the mouth. Raise your hand if you see that second image. All right, pretty cool. Op art, love it. Plays tricks on your eyes. Here's another one, and we've talked about this one. I've shown you this before. Uh, here we have the um, older lady here with her hair and a little earring and her forehead and the wrinkles and the nose and it goes into the mouth and the chin, but we also have the lady with her sombrero, her hands and the face looking over at this gentleman with a sombrero mustache playing the guitar. Boy, he's also, the second image is the old man and here's his hair and his ears, this uh, figure right here. Pretty cool. There's actually a third image. Do you see it? The gold candlestick right here, or maybe it's a cup chalice. But uh, so that's three images in one. Pretty cool. All right, I love this one. I think you'll you'll 
this one's a little harder to see. I think you're going to like it. So you likely see the lady, and she's facing this way, away from the camera. Here's her little bonnet on her head, and the ribbons, and the forehead, the nose, mouth is probably there, the chin. And, but do you see, do you see the second image? You do, don't you? This is an old lady, maybe a witch. And here's her eye, she's staring down this way. Here's her forehead, nose. This is her mouth and her big chin right here. You see that second image? Thumbs up if you see that second image. Pretty awesome, that's op art, playing tricks on your eyes, optical illusion. This is a really incredible op optical illusion. This is just a standard hallway with straight up and down walls and straight ceiling and, par and parallel floor. However, it would be difficult walking down this hallway because of the way it's been painted. With all these lines that curve and bend, it makes you feel like the walls curve and bend and the floor and the ceiling does also. But it's just an illusion. It's just the way it's painted. All right, here's an illusion. Do you see it? Look at the ladder and the guy sitting on top of the building or is he in the corner of the upper corner of a room? Do you see it? Can you see the two different uh, ways of looking at this? Look, it's tricking the dog. Look at that. <laughs> it's a canine optical illusion as well. All right, here's more about my favorite op artist, MC Escher. And here are some of his examples that we're going to look at and talk about. Here is a very creative way of making a self-portrait. So self-portrait is where there's a picture, a painting, or a drawing of yourself. And so he drew himself in the reflection of a mirrored silver ball. And so when he did that, he had to draw curved and bending lines to uh, that wrap around this ball that the, the, the reflection of the silver ball creates. And so that is pretty cool. I just love that. Here's one of his impossible buildings. So he made some uh, buildings that at first glance look like they could be made, like that impossible triangle. But Evidently, obviously, after you start looking at it a little longer, it is completely impossible to be built or to be walking on or living on. Here's an animated example of the same thing that someone made years after. Pretty awesome. Try to follow one of the uh, little guys walking around. MC Escher's Impossible Building. Op art. Here's some more of MC Escher's artwork. <clears throat> He's done other... Uh, other, other types of art, including um, tessellations, which I think we've talked about a few years ago. We might talk about again here soon. But if you look over here, we've got a uh, play on positive and negative space. We've got the black geese. And as you, your eye moves down, those black geese turn into the background. And the foreground is the negative space that turns into the positive space, which is the fish. The fish starts to appear. So that fish is actually right in here in that negative space. Pretty cool. Here's his impossible buildings, and here's another play on positive negative space, and that's actually, uh, it's a tessellation. All right, so Bridget Riley, she's another artist, and she is known for creating op art that looks like it's moving. And I wrote on there, sometimes it hurts like it, it, it may almost hurt your eyes staring at it, but it really doesn't hurt your eyes. But if you stare at it long enough, it almost looks like the artwork is moving. And some people later on took that and a step further and made it even more look like it's moving. Take a look at this, these next slides coming up. Look at that. Hands up if it looks like that's moving. If it doesn't, then here's what you can do. Just look at a spot and then kind of move your eyes around from left to right, up, to, up and down. And it should look like it's spinning just a little bit, just a little bit. Thumbs up if it's working for you. All right, look at this one. So is it moving or is it just an illusion? It's not a video, it's not moving, it's just an illusion. Thumbs up if it's moving around for you. That's right, it's really not. It's really not, guys, I promise you. It's just an illusion. This one as well, this one really works for me. I promise you this is not a video or a GIF. It's not moving, it's not waving like this. It's just a still picture, but it's an, it, it tricks your eyes, doesn't it, into thinking that it's moving this way and that way. This one as well, look at that. Thumbs up if that's working for you. I love this type of art. 
How about this one? Are the eyes growing? Pretty crazy, right? This is a cool type of um, optical illusion. So I want you, let me move this over a little bit. I want you to look at this guy right here, and then I want you to look at this guy. Which one's bigger? Point to the one on the left or the one on the right? Let me tell you which one's bigger. They're the same size, that's right. They're the same height. The illusion is created from these lines. As the lines get closer, pinch closer together, all the way over here, you'll notice that uh, um, those lines, because those lines get closer and closer together back here, that this man spans the length of one, two, or the height, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 more lines tall. When this guy is only one, two, three, four, five or so lines tall. So because of that, that because of that, it creates the illusion that this one is bigger. That's pretty wild. This is an illusion also. These red and blue lines are straight up and down. They don't bow out or curve in at all. That's right, they're straight up and down. But the illusion is created by these lines, just like with, our, with the three guys. This is an illusion also. Lines are straight up and down and perpendicular. And this proves it, if you don't believe me. There's a straight line. There's a straight line. This image, uh, you all, as you can see, it, look, it looks like uh, the, the spheres are popping out like that. And this looks like the checkerboard is folding in at one point, isn't it? It's not, but it gives that, that impression or that illusion. Look at this illusion, pretty cool. And this one, exciting. And this one, just done with a pencil creates the uh, illusion of a hole. Here's another hole. And another one. I love those. Pretty cool. For me, these are moving on the side. The, the spheres are kind of spinning. I love this art. Optical illusion art. Here's an optical illusion. Uh, tricks your eyes. It's a color illusion. That's right. Did you know that colors actually have opposites? That's right, one color has an opposite color. So if you look over here at this color wheel I put together of opposite colors, you have yellow and the opposite is purple. The opposite of red is green. The opposite of blue is this orangish yellow. That's right, opposite colors. So in this next slide, I want you to stare at the white nose right here. Stare at it for at least five seconds and I'll count for you. And then at the end of the five seconds, I want you to look over into this white space right in the center of the white space or the white square. Ready, stare right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Now look right in the center of this white space. Oh, do you see it? Do you see the yellow image up here? The yellow smiley face with the purple smile, the purple eyes, the purple nose, do you see it up here? And then it disappears. Where'd it go? You can look back over here and try it again. Pretty awesome. Optical illusion art. That's a color illusion of opposite colors. Here's another color illusion that shows opposite colors. You're going to stare right in the same thing. So stare right at the center in the black dot. You're going to stare at that for five seconds. Then you're going to move your eyes over to this black dot and you're going to see the opposite colors appear. So the opposite of this blue is this orangish yellow and the opposite, opposite of this orangish yellow is this blue. So really it's going to flip flop on the other side. So let's take five seconds, stare right here. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Look over here at this spot. Did it appear for you? Blue on the bottom, orangish yellow on the top. Nice, thumbs up if that, if that worked for you. <laughs> awesome, all right. So now we're gonna take a look at some art made by previous former Ocean Breeze students. Here we go, look at that. Gives the illusion of the spheres on top of the orange and blue checkerboard. Love it. Look at the op art. This is called um, shading blobs. And I love this. This is one of my favorite activities. In fact, I have students who come back year after year that are in high school that say, you remember that one activity with the shading blobs? Well, I still do that. I still doodle when I'm on the phone and I create those shading blobs and they love them. They show them to me. So uh, sixth grade, get ready. You're going to be working on that. 
Here's another example. Some student done op art, awesome. Love this one with this dolphin. Looks like it's just uh, popping off the page. Starfish. And some more op work, op art work. Love the hand in the hallway with the spheres. Okay, are you ready to create your own artwork? You can do this. I believe in you, you can do it. And I'm gonna show you, oh, that even Bob Ross believes you can do it. That's right, there's Bob Ross. And here's a quote from Bob Ross. He says, talent is a pursued interest. In other words, anything that you're willing to practice, you can do it. So let's take Bob Ross's advice and let's work hard and practice and we'll, we'll do it. We'll be able to do it. Here we go. Now this project is going to take at least two weeks. For some of the upper grades, it may even take three weeks. So if you're an e-learner at home, just keep checking back to see if we're still working on this project. So don't rush through and try to get it done in one week. It's definitely going to take at least two weeks. All right, so the project for grades kindergarten, first and second, are gonna be the hand, the op art hand popping off the page. Take a look at those examples. All right, the project for grades three and five is gonna be, I call this converging, which means coming together, converging poles. So the poles here are the candy cane stripe, red and white, red and white poles, and converging into the center, way back into the distance right there. All right, so this is for uh, grades three, four, and five. This project is just for sixth graders. It's the shading blobs, and this is gonna be a lot of fun. It used to, in the past, take weeks and weeks and weeks to complete, but uh, I found a way to break that down to two, maybe three weeks. All right, so boys and girls, that's it for our video. However, you're gonna skip ahead to find out, to find your grade level, and uh, find the directions for your actual project for today and for the next couple of weeks. So if you're in kindergarten, first or second, you're gonna be doing this project. Everyone else, you're gonna skip ahead and find uh, the directions for your grade level. All right, kindergarten, first and second grade, this is your art project. It's called Emerging Hands. And it's op art and it gives the illusion of the hand popping off the page like that. So if you look at this, you can see that it's the lines that bump over the hands and back off the paper. These are horizontal lines, which means side to side. And as it bumps over the hand, it gives the illusion of that hand being three-dimensional on the page. So how do we do this? Well, I'm gonna give you a piece of paper and you're gonna trace your hand, step number one. You're gonna trace your hand and arm very lightly with the pencil. If you notice, you don't see the pencil mark where the hand is, do you? So very lightly, you're gonna trace your hand so you can just barely, barely see it. Step two, you're gonna be begin drawing a horizontal line that's side to side, remember. Uh, on one side, you can start in the middle or you can start way at the bottom, wherever you wanna start, that's fine. You're going to start drawing a horizontal line. You're going to move it from left to right until you reach the finger or the hand. Then you're going to stop. Don't take your pencil off the page just yet. So wherever you stop, you're going to start right at the edge of your hand or your finger. Where you stop? Right there. You're going to bump up over your hand and back down on the other side of the hand to give it a curved or a raised illusion and then you stop right there let me take this one for example right here bump up and over stop at the end where you're going to exit the hand you've curved down and now you're going to just go straight horizontal line across and off your paper just like that and you're going to continue that let's see that, that would be step three once your hand or finger continues uh finger continue the line but sharply curve it up gradually curve it up and over the hand as I've said, and back down to the other side of the hand finger with a sharp exiting curve. And step four, here we are. You're gonna continue that line horizontally off the paper. So here we go, step five, color. So you're gonna decide on a, on a color pattern and you're gonna color each line or group of lines, however you want to, the space between each lines. And um, you're gonna continue that color pattern all for, throughout your paper and that's it. And then you'll be done. 
and I can't wait to see your art. Remember, it's going to take two weeks, and I know this is going to be beautiful. So if you're an e-learner, please send that to me. I can't wait to see it. You guys here in class, it's going to be awesome. All right, boys and girls, if you are in three, four, and five, your video is next, or your clip is next. All right, so grades third, fourth, and fifth, you are going to be working for your art project, your op art project. You're going to be working on converging poles. So I call this converging poles for lack of a better uh, title because I've, I thought this looked like candy canes, you know, the candy cane stripes, and they look like poles or candy cane stems going down converging together at the, uh, the one point right there. So here we go. Here's how to do this one. Okay, so you're going to get a piece of paper and step number one, you're going to place tiny dots near this, oh, one tiny dot near the very center of your page right here. Very small, so you can't see it right there in the very center. Look, this isn't exactly in the center and that's quite all right. Step two, you're going to draw 10 tiny dots around the edge of the paper. I made these green dots kind of big just so you can see them, but you definitely don't want to make them visible and very big like that. So you're going to make 10 dots across the paper, spread them out. You might have three on this side, three on that side, two on that side, two on that side. Do not do any more or less than 10 dots. Okay, step three, you're going to draw straight lines from each of those dots to the very center of your paper where that dot is. You guys in class, I'm not gonna be giving rulers out. I know it would make it a lot easier, but then we uh, we run into the problem of disinfecting and sanitizing those rulers during COVID right now. So you're gonna have to make a line as straight as possible. If it's not perfect, perfectly straight, it'll still look great. So straight line, straight as possible from each dot to the very center. Make sure you hit the very center. All right, step number three, sorry, four. You're gonna begin with one pair of lines and draw inward curving lines starting near, uh, starting near the edge of the paper and reducing space between lines as you approach the center dot. This is hard to explain, so I'll try to explain it the best I can. So you're gonna take um, two pairs, uh, you can take one pair of dots, like this dot here and this dot here that are right next to each other. This is going to be your first pole or candy cane or whatever you want to call it. So these two dots right here you, that go to the center, you're going to draw inward curving lines. So this is an inward, inward curving lines, it, line. It curves towards the center of the paper. We're going to call that an inward I can't do it with that. An inward curving line curving towards the center of the paper. So we have an inward curving line. We're going to start from dot to dot with a nice gentle curve. Then we're going to skip a space, a nice big space, and we're going to do the same type of curve. And then we're going to skip a little bit less of a space. See how that distance here is smaller than the distance from here to here? Less space, we're going to make an inward curving line. Then we're going to skip an even smaller space, like right here, even smaller space, we're going to inward curving line, and then an even smaller space, inward curving line, until we have no more room to make any more inward curving lines. All right, you got that? Ah, that was tricky, I know. Okay, step five. Okay, so now we're going to skip this space. We're going to go to our next pole or candy cane stem. We're going to skip the space right here. We're going to go to the next set of dots. So right here, from this dot to this dot, and we've left this space empty. From this dot to this dot. We're going to do the same thing. Inward curving line and inward curving line. And we're going to skip less of a space, inward curving line. We're going to make this space even less, inward curving line. We're going to make this space even less, inward curving line. All right. And then we're going to continue that, um, those two steps. We're going to skip this space right here. And this is going to become our next pole. We're going to continue making those inward curving lines all the way around. Skip the space do this pull, skip a space, do this pull, skip a space, and we're back to our first pull. Then step number eight, we're gonna choose, oh, are we on step number eight? I 
think we are. Okay, sorry. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do our outward curving lines. That's tricky. That's right. These were inward curving lines. This is an outward curving line. So we're going to take uh, wherever we ended up on with this dot here, we're going to take and make an outward curving line and we're going to finish where this line came to the point here. Then we're going to start at this point. We're going to do an outward curving line. Outward is this way. Outward curving line and we're going to end up where this line started. And then where this line finished, we're going to do an outward curving line and we're going to end up where that line started and so on and so on. We're going to do that in all the spaces between the poles. Tricky, right? Oh, that's it. Okay, so then step number eight, when you're done, you just choose a color pattern and you alternate your uh, your color. So here we've got purple, I mean, <laughs> red, white, red, white, red, white. Here we have white, purple, white, purple, white, purple. And you just continue that. Make sure that the poles are have the same color pattern and the space in between have the same color pattern as itself. All right, hope you got it. That's a tricky one, I know, but I know you can do it. Grades three, four, and five, I can't wait to see your artwork. All right, if you're in grade six, grade six, then you just hold on for this next clip and you'll see how to do your shading blobs. Here we go. All right, sixth graders, you are gonna be working on your shading blobs. And after you get a piece of paper, you're going to draw a slightly curved line, just like this across your paper. I know this isn't a slightly curved line. This has some big curves in it. It's a little easier if you make it a slightly curved line, but um, you can do it this way if you really are up for a challenge. It goes right through the center of your paper. Next, you're gonna make four tiny dots along those lines. Spread them out, but they shouldn't all be the same length apart from, from themselves, each other. Then you're going to draw, I call them bumps or, um, yeah, bumps, smoothly curved lines. You're going to connect the dots with smoothly curved lines. And the last line will go off your paper just like that. That's okay. All right. Then you're going to continue growing your blobs or your bumps by adding more curved lines to each as shown. So you're just going to keep doing the same type of curved line. Those curved lines might start to grow and get bigger and bigger. They might get smaller and smaller and smaller. However you want to create it or however it kind of takes on a life of its own. So you're going to continue those bumps or curved lines upwards and also downward. Downwards? until you fill your paper. And, and this is interesting how this, these curved lines got smaller and smaller until they disappeared, almost pinched off by these. Okay, so now let's talk about coloring. You're gonna use color pencil preferably, but crayons should work also. Uh, you're going to, this is the shading part of the shading blobs. So you're going to, whatever color you choose, you're gonna make it darker, push harder, right here in the cracks in the crevices and the deep part of it and lighter and lighter to eventually white down the very center. Let me show you this. See how it's white down the center or close to white down the center and it's darker in the cracks or crevices or deep parts. This is a great example also. That's gonna give it the illusion of depth and that's where the shading part of shading blobs comes in. So back to this, you're going to choose a color pattern, alternate colors, however you choose and um, just remember to do the shading part as well. So here's some examples of some color choices people have made and they look really cool and I know yours is too. Is that the last one? That's the last slide. All right, sixth grade, I know that you're gonna do a great job at this and I can't wait to see your artwork. And that's it, boys and girls. That's our optical illusion art lesson. Remember, this is gonna take at least two, maybe three weeks. So keep checking back to learners to see if you have a new video uh, in a couple weeks. All right, bye boys and girls, that's Op Art. Bye, good luck. Sitting in your house in quarantine, getting old fast and you're losing steam. Break out a piece of paper, crayons, and a pencil. Tune in Mr. Allison's YouTube channel. So Kobe, 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 you don't bother me. Gonna make some art for everyone to see.